Spider-Man gets himself an upgrade. We're going to be doing an unboxing of the new Hot Toys Avengers Infinity War Iron Spider. This box has just arrived, just arrived in the mail. We're going to go ahead and get this opened up. Now, I do want to stress this. This isn't going to be the actual review. This is just me opening up the box, kind of like what I did with Spider-Man Homecoming and having a look at the figure, having a look at the contents and all that other good stuff. And then if you guys want to stay tuned at a later date, I'm going to do a more in-depth review of the Spider-Man figure, of course, once I've had a chance to kind of have a look at it. But this is sort of just my initial feelings of the figure. I thought that the Spider-Man Homecoming figure was really a well-done figure. I thought the likeness looked really good of Tom Holland, and uh, hopefully again, we'll see what the Iron Spider looks like. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get this opened up. I really only have done one of two things here. I've cut the tape, of course, for the main mailer box, which I can, of course, put to the side. And then the other thing, let's move that all out of the way here. The other thing, of course, well, the other thing, I say of course, but the other thing I've done also as well is that I have just kind of opened up the initial, I pulled out the tray, I just kind of looked at the stuff, but I really haven't spent any time, you know, digesting, kind of examining Spider-Man as a whole. And that's kind of what this early unboxing is going to be. Now, is it going to be a lot better than the Spider-Man Homecoming figure? That's certainly debatable because, after all, the other figure, I think for fans of Spider-Man, uh, you probably will be liking more of the more classic outfit. This is, of course, the Iron Spider costume from Infinity War. And uh, I guess, actually, just before we open it, here's what the box looks like. It's the Iron Spider 1-6 scale collectible figure. Product code is MMS482. It's a nice artwork there, featured also on the front. Not sure if you can also see it there, but there's the Avengers logo up at the top. We've got this Iron Spider, a carryover of his his little arms, the robotic arms on the sides. And uh, there's actually in the, even the Infinity Gauntlet right there as well. This is all also raised, which you pr probably may not be able to tell. I got a little bit of felt here as well. But this is all raised. Uh, it does look like, yes, the Avengers logo is also raised, or at the very least, the A is raised. And uh, down below as well, we've got Avengers Infinity War and Iron Spider. All, again, font that lifted little bit higher up from the rest of the box. There's the back of the box. The Hot Toys Presents Movie Masterpiece Series 1 6 scale collectible figure Avengers Infinity War Iron Man or Iron, Iron Spider MMS 482. The cast and crew responsible for making and producing this figure. Uh, this will also slide off, which I guess I probably should have also shown before we start opening up and getting all the contents out. As you can see, visibly there is Spider-Man, the Tom Holland or Peter Parker alternate head sculpt. And it comes also what looks to be a secondary head sculpt. I believe one does light up, one doesn't light up. Uh, it does have the mask in which he can hold in his hand. A lot of people really did ask me when I did the unboxing of the Spider-Man Homecoming figure, how come I didn't show that the mask went in fact over top of his head? And the honest truth is it didn't go over top of his head. Even in the instructions it said don't try to stretch it and fit it over top of Spider-Man's head because it just won't fit. Uh, okay, so we've got the box. Again, there's the open window right there. You've got Avengers Infinity War down below. I'm actually just going to move all of this stuff away as well. And we'll just put that away there. Uh, now we've got two sections. We've got the spider arms. And the spider arms appear to be, in fact, plastic. Those are going to peg into Spider-Man's back torso. And I guess these just untab from the back card. So we're just going to lift those off. There's a whole lot of packaging happening here. And I guess while we're also at it, I can lift these up. See if I can get the arms completely out. One thing I have noticed with the particular figure, here's the arms, by the way. They do have what look what sounds and looks to be ratcheted joints. They are plastic. One of the big problems I heard a lot of people talking about when it came to the Spider-Man, uh, the Iron Spider figure that we're looking at here, is they didn't like that the pegs were so noticeable on its back. Uh, it is again ratcheted. Some nice coloring actually on here. The metallic blue mixed with a nice, very vibrant gold. 
So we got four legs, as it did in the movie. Once again, more trays, more trays, and more trays. We can just put those to the side. And then we've got, of course, Spider-Man here figure. Some alternate hands. Of course, the webbing up at the top there. There is the Tom Holland or Peter Parker head sculpt. Two heads are better than one. Various eyes. There is the holding mask. And again, some interchangeable hands. And uh, there's also batteries down there as well. So I am going to lift this. A few people actually felt as if I was a little rough getting the figure out of packaging when I first did the unboxing of the Spider-Man Homecoming figure. I didn't think I was being overly rough, but I don't know, maybe maybe I was. Uh, so we got a series of interchangeable hands. I'm gonna very easily, carefully take those all out. When I, I think do the full review, we'll do some comparisons between this and the Spider-Man Homecoming figure, which I actually just got in my uh, display case right now as we speak. Very carefully take off the mask. And once again, yeah, it's it seemed, I don't know if you can see it right there, this is seamed all the way around. It doesn't have the necessary means, like even the neck isn't wide enough really. It would probably involve you having to take like a knife or seam ripper if you you know, if you know somebody that sews and just kind of remove the seam right there. Believe you me, for what ended up, what, what would end up happening is you probably would just have a really, really loose mask that not only would fit over top of Peter's head, but it would just sit way too loose. It just wouldn't, it would defeat the purpose completely. So yeah, again, even though it's a little bit more metallic than the Spider-Man Homecoming mask, I would definitely still say having not, of course, looked at the instructions, but clearly that doesn't look like it's gonna fit over top of his head. It's just something that Spider-Man's gonna hold. Uh, we've also got some pegs. These are colored in red. Normally they're flesh tone pegs. Of course, we've got the figure right here. Already one thing about the figure I know I'm not too crazy about. I may actually just, if I have a knife here, I don't know if I have a knife readily available. But uh, one thing I, I, one thing I'm not crazy about is I find like the head for starters doesn't look close enough to the costume. I mean, this is of course a very small gripe, but uh, it's plastic. The costume is almost like a, a stretched vinyl, and uh, it doesn't seem like it's. It seems very much like it's two figures. One head is from one thing, and then the body is from something else. It's a shame that they couldn't have stretched a fabric over top of this in some way. Now is this one, this one I don't believe is the light up one, so it would be the other one in the packaging. And then obviously the other thing that you probably see as well, it's magnetized. I don't know if I like the idea of magnetized heads. Um, i trying to think of the one that I have, it's the Dark Knight Rises Batman, and it would basically be the exact same thing. The head sits on a magnet, and I never feel like it, when you are moving the head up and down and turning it, it never really feels like it's part of the rest of the figure. It just sort of feels like it's something that's sitting on, well, it's literally sitting on top of a magnet and just kind of spinning around there. Got some batteries. That would be for its alternate head, head sculpt. And very, very carefully take out the two heads. There's a the Spider-Man head. There is the Tom Holland head sculpt. Uh, we've also got, I'm just going to move the felt out of the way here. And again, this is only just the immediate unboxing. I wanted to really uh, just kind of give my initial feelings of what I think of the figure. And then, uh, you know, of course we would do a fully, full extensive, hopefully extensive review. There's the various different eyes, all magnetized, I would imagine. The various webs all of which we've seen before with other Spider-Mans. The Spider-Man Homecoming figure had the exact same webbing. And that's really about it for this tray. I've got some instructions down below. I'm going to very carefully read that when it comes time to, uh, to actually get around to playing with the figure. And of course, we will get into a more in-depth review at a later date. But here is the, I guess that would be a hexagonal display stand with the Avengers Infinity War, which is a raised font like that iron spider on the front of that 
not quite on a metallic placard, but still an Iron Spider on the front. And then we've got the Avengers logo there up at the top there. Kind of like the celestial sort of cloud that they've got on the top there. And then this would just attach to the top. And uh, this looks obviously like a wire frame. So this will be able to adjust if you want to have the figure a little bit more dynamically posed. Then we will have a look at the Tom Holland head sculpt. You know, it does actually look like it's the exact same head sculpt. I can't think, looking at it, and we'll compare it to the other one in the review, but to be honest, it doesn't look like it's that different. I feel like the hair might be slightly darker than the one that we had before. Maybe the skin tone also seems a little bit darker. One obvious thing as well, now that I'm thinking about it, when I did the unboxing or how to even look at the Spider-Man Homecoming figure, I seem to recall that Tom Holland or Peter Parker's eyes were kind of off to the side, the looking off to the side. This one here is just looking straight forward. So that would be one different correction uh, versus the one that uh, the first one that we had a look at. Nice looking head sculpt. Jokingly, people had said, oh, it actually looks like you're holding Tom Holland's head in your hands. I guess that would be a compliment to Hot Toys. Again, nice looking head sculpt, I have to admit. Uh, and then, I'm just gonna put that one down here. We also have this head sculpt. Now, now here is the one that has the light up eyes. Now, I'm just going to carefully take the head off this one. Just lay him down here for a second. I want to look at the two head sculpts. Because I am actually curious. Well, I'm looking at the two. I don't feel like there's much different at all between them, other than the fact that this one lights up and this one doesn't. Kind of falls within the same category as like the Iron Man figures, where you, you get a helmet that has the flip-up visor, and then Tony Stark's head is, is inside, and then there's the non-Tony Stark head, the non-visored head, just a regular Iron Man. If they look identical to one another, Nine times out of ten, I usually display the one that's got Tony Stark's face inside. Because at any given point, I could just lift the visor up, and I got Tony Stark inside. Sometimes, unfortunately, the sacrifice for that is that the eyes uh, on the Iron Man... I know we're not really talking about Iron Man here, but the, uh, heads, the, uh, the eyes on the visor plate uh, aren't white. They're usually see-through, uh, because the one that is white usually has the light-up option. Here, though, I mean, if you like look at the two... I actually kind of like the one that lights up a little bit more. For obvious reasons, it does, it will give you the option to light it up. So that's already a plus. But I also kind of like the depth. This one has a little bit more depth to it, as you can see, versus this one right here. This one just, I mean, you, you get that sort of honeycomb effect on the eyes. This one also has it. But this one's got, it's, it's neat because the way you look at it, if you tilt it back and forth, it does seem like there it's it's a layer there's something underneath it and then there's almost a dark outline like a gray outline around it whereas this one doesn't have it it's funny i probably will end up displaying it with the light up eyes even if i don't end up ever lighting it up or i might just even keep the batteries in there and just turn it on and off as i need it but yeah, i think i actually like this head sculpt versus this one here even though they i mean looking at them they look identical to one another. So I'm going to put this one right here. Again, just to show you how that goes over top of the head. It's just magnetized. So, yeah, there you go. And it must be, I guess, magnetized around the outer area. Or this, maybe this is the magnet. And then this is just a metal ring around it. Because obviously they couldn't put the magnet here. Because that's where the battery plate is. Again, like the head sculpt sits on. Does kind of again like look like it's two different types of materials one is an obvious fabric and then this one here is the plastic but uh there again is the two head sculpts if you're curious and uh, then we've got the tom holland head sculpt which is this one right here it does make like the neck look a little longer doesn't it it's kind of awkwardly i feel like his head should be like right right there Maybe not that close, but I think that's too high. It does seem like it's too long of a neck. 
Um, as for the rest of the body, we've got, of course, some felt. Just pull those out. Click, click, click. Ratcheted joints, I'm hearing right off the bat. Legs, same idea. Ratcheted joints. Boots look good. I, I like the sheen on the fabric. And these must be, I guess, where I'm not going to start ripping these apart until I start looking at the instructions. I'm assuming you just pull these out. The holes would be inside. And then you would just take, of course, the spider legs and you would just tap them in place. I don't know why so obviously these have to stick out as much as they do. I guess the I guess the logic for Hot Toys is they want to make it sticking out enough so that I guess you, you can get your finger in there and you're not causing damage to the fabric. I guess the, that's the only thought I have. It does. It's very noticeable the fact that it sticks out as much as it does. Um, I'm not crazy about the way the seam line is working here. Um, I don't know if you can also see it too, but as I bend the arm, it's developing a crease right there in the armpit. I don't want to say like the seams look sloppy. I mean, they. I'm sure it's only because of the material that they're using, but the seam almost looks like just similar to... The seam, I'm sure, is probably the same type of seam that they use for fabric costumes, but I think it's just because it's this kind of vinyl... don't even want to say like like a pleather, but almost like an imitation. It's probably like a vinyl, like a very tight, tight stretched vinyl. But it, the seam lines seem more noticeable. They seem also like they bunch up a little bit more here, so I'm not sure if I like that too much. I'm also wondering how far out you can bend these arms. Oh, see, like right here. Now, see, again, like this is all just my initial first first opinions of the figure before I start like doing anything with it I mean I haven't had the figure out long you guys have been here this whole time seeing this stress line right here I mean the bend is actually happening below that I wonder if that is a stress mark that's developed in the costume honestly I don't know how long this fabric is gonna last on this figure I mean even like the photos that we've seen for the uh, the Iron Spider, even on line, bending the arms, you can already, s like even in the pictures, you could see how stuff was leaving a, a, a like a crease in the fabric. I'm also a bit concerned with this part right up here. This is, a, this is separate from the rest of the costume. And I'm wondering, right, right in there, see how that bent? I'm wondering if that over time is going to start leaving a mark. This may this may be one of those types of figures where you may have to pose him as like in a museum pose because anything else, if you bend him and have his arm in an exaggerated pose too long, I'm wondering if it's just going to start leaving these very obvious awkward looking lines in the costume where you've like left the arm bent. I do like the fact that there's a ratcheted joint. It, it, it tells me that the arm is safely moving. I don't know. <laughs> and the legs. Like the, the costume does look good. I like the metallic sheen to it. I'm just worried about the longevity of the material, to be honest. I just wish this seam line wasn't so obvious. I mean, I might sound like I'm overly nitpicky, but I mean, really, for a figure that is, uh, you know, well, I guess it would be U.S. probably be like two fifty or so, and then that converts over to Canadian dollars, and then of course the exchange and, sh and shipping and all that stuff. Um, this figure probably would have topped over three hundred dollars easily. For that, you would want the figure to have some durability to the material. Whether the durability is going to be there is certainly a case. It's just a, a you know just a measure of time. It's just a measure of time to see if long-term we're going to start having any problems with these. The Amazing Spider-Man 2, even though it's not really of the Marvel Universe, but one thing, like, that figure looked good initially, but then again, a lot of people after the fact were having problems where, like, the, the mask right here was starting to develop, like, a black smudge line underneath, and that apparently was related to the glue that they used to glue the fabric down. Maybe that's why they didn't use fabric on these helmets, or on these heads, 
Maybe that's what they ended, and that's why they ended up doing it the way that they did by making this all plastic. But I do kind of wish that they could have used the same material, stretched it somehow over top of the mask, so it did look like it was the same material. Because like looking at the two, one does stand out a little bit more than the other. It does look like this one's plastic. This one is just a fabric. I'm happy with the head sculpts. Even though, again, I don't feel like this one has changed all that much. I would have to look to the other one to see if that was the case. It's a good head sculpt, though. I mean, uh, I will be curious to see once we get the batteries installed. And it would just be a case of unscrewing that. These are always the trickiest things to get open. Especially like the Iron Man. Take that plate off and then trying to get the batteries all lined up. It's never, never successful. I think maybe now that I have the Iron Spider, I might be inclined to maybe display the Spider-Man Homecoming Spider-Man without the mask. Maybe display him with the Tom Holland head sculpt, and then maybe display the uh, Iron Spider here uh, with with like one of these masks. Which I think again, I'm gonna go probably with the the one that has the light up eyes, just because it seems like there's a little bit more depth to the eye. If that makes any sense versus versus this one right here. As for accessories, there's not. Really Bought four accessories. Um, again, you've got some interchangeable hands, kind of like the go-to stuff for Spider-Man. These, this one's neat because he's got the repulsor blast in his hands. But, I mean, other than really webbing, there's not a whole lot that comes with this guy, other than just again like the arms, like the spider, the spider legs. I was honestly not even crazy about this costume when I first saw it in the movie. Um, it has grown on me though. I mean, still part of me kind of wished that for the Iron Spider that they could have given him like the comic Iron Spider costume where it was all red. And then, of course, his eyes would have been like gold to, to match his to match his spider legs. But uh, this is kind of, this, again, this is what they went with in the movie. Didn't like it initially. Like it a little bit more now. Now that I've seen uh, Infinity War. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with the figure. Like, I, I feel long term is going to be really where this figure will either be really good or, you know, again, you're going to start seeing problems with the figure, uh, you know, the longer you have them on display. I mean, certainly one thing, like I said, I am a bit worried about the fabric. I mean, this could feel like something that would easily uh, puncture and rip. Um, again, I hope that the seams stay strong enough on this guy, but probably not going to be a figure that I'm going to get too crazy poses with. Uh, probably going to maybe put space you know limitations wise i might actually even put the arms in or i might not if i put the arms in i might even just like display him like that i mean that's not the most exciting of poses but i just worry kind of like wonder woman the type of material that they use and even though wonder woman is kind of like again that that rubber body uh spider-man here doesn't have that but he, the, the the costume i think is what my biggest problem is going to be with this guy long term so, initial thoughts, kind of a mixed bag. I kind of knew what I was getting into based on the image that I saw online. Uh, again, I was really worried when I saw online that even like the published photos, like the, the photographer's photos, still starts, you could see like online stress marks. I think there was lines here. You could start seeing something start developing in the elbows. And and then again, that's that's their marketing photos. So... I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be like for this guy over the course of time, but kind of like in the head sculpt, though. And I'll probably again display him like this. So there you go, guys. Uh, like I said, this was just an unboxing. Just sort of getting this guy out, getting a feel for what the figure is going to be like. Um, again, much like the Spider-Man Homecoming review, the unboxing that I did, the more substantial, the more meatier, juicier review uh, will be coming soon, uh, where we will, you know, kind of examine the figure and examine the costume a little bit more than what we did here. Uh, this again was just just an just an early unboxing. Um, make sure as well, hey, if you are new to this channel, by the way, as well, 
and uh, maybe you've come here watching this video, uh, feel free, check out the other stuff that I've got on this channel and make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below. We're gonna do some more unboxings, we're gonna do some more reviews, there's a whole bunch of six scale figure reviews coming onto this channel as well, so lots of good stuff going on uh, if you are new to this channel. And if you are new, by the way, just like to say hello, just say hello down below and always like meeting new people coming onto this channel. Uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.